Anciently, the birth of a child was great cause for rejoicing. If that child was a son, there was even more rejoicing. According to the traditions of the shepherds, it was customary for family members to bring a palm tree and to decorate it with gifts for the new child. It was also customary for each visiting guest to bring a lamb. In the Bible we read, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, watching over their flocks by night. These were the master shepherds who tended the temple flocks, the lambs, sheep, and goats destined to be offered as sacrifices on the temple altar. It was to these master shepherds that the angel of the Lord came in the spring during the lambing season. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Anointed One, the Messiah. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, the birth of a baby that belongs to us, the birth of the Lamb of God. And they came with haste. They found the stable quarters of Mary and Joseph marked by the royal standard of the house of King David. Inside they found the Son of God lying in a manger wrapped in his swaddling clothes, as the angel had proclaimed. Back in those days, the clothes you wore, as well as the swaddling clothes in which a baby was wrapped, signified your station in life, as well as your ancestral heritage. Because Mary was a princess of the house of King David, she would have been wearing a royal blue silk garment with a golden candlestick embroidered on it. She would have prepared a royal blue silk swaddling cloth for her firstborn son and embroidered it with a golden candlestick, signifying his birthright claim to the throne of David, as well as his station in eternity as the light and life of the world. Next, a red silk swaddling cloth signified the young baby Jesus' connection to the land of Moab through Ruth, who married Boaz. About 1300 years before Jesus was born, there was a wealthy man named Boaz who lived at Bethlehem. He married a widow named Ruth, who was originally from the country of Moab, east of the Dead Sea. They had a son named Obed, who inherited his father's estate. Obed's son Jesse inherited the estate after him, and Jesse's youngest son became the second king of all of Israel and inherited the estate from his father. It came to pass that King David built a fortress over the house of Boaz on the family estate, and when one of King David's sons raised an army and tried to kill him, David took the rest of his family to a safe place until General Joab defeated the rebellious army. A man named Barzillai was loyal and helpful to David and his family during that time. To reward him, David bequeathed to him the fortress that stood on his Bethlehem estate. According to the law of Moses, you could never sell the land of your inheritance, but you could sell or give away the houses, the vineyards, the orchards, the fields of grain, the stables, and so forth. So the fortress over the house of Boaz became the property of Barzillai. After several generations, when Barzillai's descendants died off or disappeared, ownership of the fortress reverted back to the descendants of David, and the fortress was turned into an inn. The inn was a large two-story building complex of a series of rooms connected together around a courtyard in the center that was open to the sky. All around the perimeter of the lower level was an arcade, or a series of stables where the horses, donkeys, mules, and camels were stabled. There was also an outdoor cooking area there with a cistern that collected water. On either side of the courtyard there was a staircase that led to the living quarters for the innkeeper's family, as well as guest chambers. When the guest rooms filled up, as they did at the time of the census, the innkeeper turned the animals into the open courtyard and prepared the stables for guest accommodations. They lacked privacy, but they were clean and they were comfortable. 
When Joseph and Mary arrived at the inn at Bethlehem, they were returning to their family's estate, where other relatives were also gathering. The family patriarch and keeper of the inn would have welcomed them and invited them to share a family meal. Joseph and Mary would have rested and visited with the family in the upper living quarters until it was time to retire. Because all of the guest rooms were full, they were made comfortable in one of the stables downstairs. Because Jesus was born in the stable of the inn, a public place, he belonged to the people of Bethlehem. He belonged to all of Israel and to all of the world. In this way the words of Isaiah were, for, were fulfilled, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Next, a swaddling cloth of many colors designated Jesus as one in whose veins flowed the blood of many nations and people of every condition of life. About 500 years before Jesus was born, Queen Esther, a princess of the tribe of Benjamin and a descendant of King Saul, married the king of Persia. She gave birth to a son, a prince of Persia, not their crown prince and heir of the throne, but a prince nonetheless. The duties of princes in Persia included governorship of the conquered provinces of the empire. One of Queen Esther's great-grandson princes requested the governorship of Palestine because of his Semitic heritage from his great-grandmother, Queen Esther. He settled in Nazareth and acquired a large estate there. The governor's family remained on the estate through the generations long after the Persian Empire gave way to the Greeks. Nakib Shah, a descendant of the governor and of Queen Esther, a priest prince of the Magi order, came to rule the estate. He was a very good and faithful man. He was very wealthy and the master shepherd of many flocks. Nakib was visiting the city of Jerusalem one day where he saw Princess Anna and took interest in her. He learned that she was a princess of the house of King David and lived in Bethlehem on the estate of King David. She was a teacher in the temple as well as a prophetess, or one who kept the traditions and handed down the oral histories and genealogy. Nakib Shah wanted to marry Princess Anna, but the Jewish customs of the time dictated that she could marry only a Jew. So Nakib Shah converted to Judaism along with 400 members of his family and associates, and his name was changed to Joachim. Anna moved to Nazareth with Joachim and lived with him on his palatial estate, but she remained childless for many years. Finally, together, they made a vow to God that if he would give them a child, they would consecrate the child to the Lord. Anna soon became pregnant and bore a daughter. They named her Miriam. In the Greek language, she was known as Mary. At the age of three, Mary was brought to the temple in Jerusalem and dedicated to the service of the Lord. The temple workers and the priests became her guardians and trustees of her father's estate when her mother and father died several years later. Mary was very beautiful and had a wonderful singing voice. She was also a scriptorian, a prophetess, and a teacher like her mother. She spent her summers in Nazareth in her own home, the palatial estate that she inherited from her father as his only child. The rest of the year she served in the temple. There in Nazareth she became acquainted with and betrothed to Joseph, a descendant of King David through the royal carpenter line of Nathan. Through her mother, Princess Anna, Mary was a descendant of the house of Joseph through the tribe of Ephraim. The swaddling cloth of many colors connected baby Jesus to the tribe of Ephraim as a prince of Israel by birthright in the house of Joseph, as well as a prince of Egypt through Ephraim's mother, Asenath, daughter of the priest of On at Heliopolis. Through his grandfather, Joachim, baby Jesus was a prince of Persia and a prince in the royal household of King Saul of the tribe of Benjamin. So you see, Jesus was indeed one in whose veins flowed the blood of many nations and people of every condition in life. Finally, Mary laid down a swaddling cloth of the shepherd king's plaid, woven of silk with gold strands running through it. When the master shepherds of the temple flocks found the baby Jesus in a manger, the swaddling blankets told the story of his birthright and identified him as their promised Messiah. 
And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. The birth of the Messiah was proclaimed and published throughout the land, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds.